All right, friends, now we're gonna talk about the third type of data structures, we have the sets. So now, what is the issue? Let's say that you have a list of customer's ID, and as you are checking the data, you have found out that some IDs are appearing twice. Those duplicates in my list is indicator that the data is not clean. So now what we can do, we can start like removing the duplicates and cleaning the data by building a loop and then start removing duplicates. And after a while, we have to recheck again and maybe start removing again. So this is not really nice we don't do that in python if you have this issue where you want to keep the data unique then we don't use list instead we use the data structure called sets so what is a set it is an ordered collection of unique items so here again we have two things it is unordered and at the same time it is unique and in order to create a set the syntax for that is going to be very simple again we're going to use those special characters so we're going to use the curly brackets and as usual the data inside it is going to be separated with a comma so now let's go and understand the behavior of the sets in python because as we understood every data structure has its own personality and rules so let's go okay so let's go and create a set uh, this time the curly brackets with same data so 10 30 and 20. so now the first thing that we're gonna check whether the set is ordered so print my set and let's go and execute now look at this we have 10 then 20 and 30 but i defined it like this 10 30 and then 20. so python did change the order that i have defined that means my friends the set is unordered it is not like the list or the table but now you might say it looks nice python is like sorting the data ascending well this is totally coincidence because this is totally random let me show you exactly how this works as we create a list in python it's gonna be stored in like an array so each item is sitting next to each other's in a memory and each one of them has the index number so python can go and access any value using the index number and with that as well it maintains the same order but as you create a set python gonna store it completely differently so we have like a hash function that is generating cryptical values and each item gonna be placed based on the this hashed value and not by the position number not by the index so now look at this after python create the set it has no chance at all to understand the order of the items so it doesn't know which was the first the second the last and once you print it it's going to be depending on those hash values to print it in the output so that's why the sets are unordered and now you might say but this looks chaotic why do we have those hash values well the only reason for that is speed so that means with the set python can check if a value exists very fast using those hash values so there is like a trade-off between losing the order and having fast performance for your lookups now let's check the second thing remember does it allow any duplicate so i'm gonna have the 10 twice let's go and execute it look at this i have the 10 only once so this is another restriction with the set it doesn't allow duplicates but you will not get any error in the output if you have duplicates python just gonna go and remove it which is sometimes a very nice thing if you want to keep unique list of data like as a start as i said the customer ids i would like to have it unique i don't want to deal with duplicates now let's keep moving how about accessing specific value is it indexed so can i access the second value the 30 remember as we're done with the list and the table we go and tell python the index number gonna be the one so let's try and print it let's go and execute now look at this it is not indexed and this is of course will not work because look at this again with the list you have for each value the index number but with the sets we don't have those numbers anymore so we don't have anymore the possibility to access any individual item inside my set and of course we cannot go and use those hash numbers because it is something internally for python it is not for us to access specific value so that's why my friends we say a set is not indexed okay so no order no duplicates no index how about the last one can i change anything after creating my set so let's try something i cannot go and update because i don't have an index let's go and remove by value my set dot remove so i have a color which is really nice now i'm gonna go and remove for example the 20 and after that i'm gonna go and print my set and then execute finally something is allowed that means it is immutable so this is how the sets behaves it is unordered it is unique doesn't allow any duplicates it is not indexed we don't have the position number anymore we have those hash values but it is immutable so we can go and change it after we create our sets okay friends so now since sets have their own personality 
they have as well their own methods. So now we're gonna go and explore new methods and operators that we didn't use with the lists. So let's go. Okay, so now let's go and create a very simple set. So we're gonna have 10, 20, 30 and 40. Now the first question is how to add an item to our set. Now we cannot go and use appends or inserts because it is based on the position number of the item and we don't have those stuffs. That's why we have a new method called adds. Very simple and you're gonna go and add for it the value. So it's gonna go and insert the item but only if it is not already there because we cannot have duplicates. So let's try this out and let's print it. Now look at this. We have 50 somewhere here in the middle. So so it will not append it, right? Totally random. Now, of course, if you go and add 10 and execute, well, nothing gonna happen because we have it already here. We will not get an error, but <laughs> Python gonna go and ignore it. So you can go and add only new values. Okay, so now this gonna be annoying, of course, if you want to add multiple values to my set. So for each new value, I'm gonna go and add a new line. So for that, we have a very nice method called update. And now you can pass for it any iterable. So anything that has a sequence, it could be a set, a list, and even a string. Like, for example, let's go and add high so if i go and update it you can see both of the characters the h and i is inside my set and you can go and use a list like one two so if you go and execute it you can do that and as well it's gonna accept a set so as you can see it's gonna accept any iterable that you add to the update so this is really a nice method in order to add several values at once and by the way there is something nice with the sets we can use like operators as a shortcut instead of using the method name. So if you want to do an update, we can do it like this. So we say the variable name, then a pipe and then equal. And then you can add the items that you want to add. So the one and two. Now, if I go and execute it, I'm going to get the same effect. It is like the update allows me to add multiple values in one go in my set. So that I have like nice shortcut instead of writing uh, the update. Now, how about to remove values from my set so we learned with the lists that we have a pop and remove either you remove by value or index well you can go and remove actually by value like for example uh, 10 and then we can print this out as you can see we just remove the 10 and one more thing that is annoying with the remove if you use like a value that is not part of your sets and executes you will get an error but sometimes this is really annoying because it's gonna break the whole code so it is not really safe you have to be careful using the remove that's why we have in python something like savior in order to remove values and that is the discard so discard we just comment this out so it's gonna work like the remove so i can go around remove for example the 10 as you can see we don't have a 10 inside my list but if i go and remove an unexisting value like the 100 nothing gonna happen i will not get an error this card is really nice if the item is there it's gonna go and remove it but if it is not then simply nothing gonna happen and by the way i just tried the pop it actually works with the set but it's gonna go and remove something totally random so for example here it removes the one so i don't recommend you to use the pop at all so as you can see with the sets, we have some new methods, the add, update, discards, and we cannot use any method that is using the position or the index number with the sets. Okay, so now we come to the interesting part where we're going to talk about the mathematical operators in sets. So now the sets in Python, it's like the mathematical sets that you have learned in the school or the sets operators that we use in the SQL. So now sometimes you have like two sets or two groups of values and you want to ask questions like does the values appear in both of the sets? Which values are overlapping? Which values are different? And the data structure sets is perfect for those questions. They are using this hash mechanism mechanism in order to make it very fast to give you the answers especially if you have large data sets and exactly for this reason we have in python some built-in methods in order to do comparisons so now let's deep dive into those mathematical operations okay so now let's go and create another set so we have some overlapping values like the 30 40 50 and 60. so now the first thing that we could do with those two sets is how about to combine both groups together and for that we have a method called union so you start with with one of the sets doesn't matter which one so you say union and then you pass to it the other 
sets. And of course, in order to see the whole thing, you're gonna go and print it. So let's go and do that. Now, as you can see, I'm getting all the items from both sets. And this is exactly what the union does. It gives you every unique value from both of the sets. So it is just mixing those two groups together. And if there is like duplicates, it's gonna go and remove it. So as you can see, we have 30 twice, but in the output, you have it only once. Same thing goes for the 40. You have it as well only once. And it is as well important to understand, we are not changing the original set. So if you go and print the A, you still have the same data. The same goes for B. So we are not changing A and B. We are just merging them together in to new set and as well we have some nice shortcuts so instead of saying union you can say a pipe and then b so if you use this operator, you're going to get the same exact results. All right, moving on to the next question. I would like now to find out the values that both of the sets are sharing. So only if the value exists in both of the sets, I wanted to see it in the output. And for that, we have the methods intersection. So again, it doesn't matter where you start. You can start from B. So A dot intersection and then the second set. So if you want to see the results, we're going to go and print it. So let's try this out. Now we are getting only 40 and 30. So it is very simple. It is returning the values that appears in both of the sets. So you're going to get only the values that are overlapping or shared between the two sets. And same thing, we have as well some shortcuts. We can say A and B. So if you go and execute it, you're going to get the same results. All right, moving on to the next question. So I would like to have the items that belongs only to the first group. So that means I would like to see the items that only appears in the first list, but doesn't overlap with the second list. And here we have another method called difference, but you have here to be very careful where you start. So I'm saying here, show me the items in the first set that has a difference from the second set. So the sides here are important. Let's go and print it out and then execute. It's going to give us the values that are in A, but not in B. And of course, my friends, we have some shortcuts for that as well using an operator. So it can be very simple if you use the minus. So A minus B, you will get the same results. Now, if you go and switch it where you say B minus A, you will get different results. So look at this. We are getting 50 and 60 because now we are saying, show me the items that are in the second set but does not belong to the first set the a and in this example we have the 50 and 60 40 will not work because we have it already in the first set same goes for the 30 so be careful with the directions as you are using this so now let's go to the next question how about that i would like to find what are values that are not overlapping at all so the exact opposite of the intersection now of course you can go and do the difference twice for each side but there is like better way to do that for this we're going to use something called symmetric difference and again does it matter where you start so it can return everything that is different between the two sets and everything that is shared or overlapped will be excluded so let's try this out and execute now look at this from the first set we are getting the 10 and 20 because you we cannot find it in b and in b we are getting the 50 and 60 because we cannot find it in a and of course we have an operator for this so we say a carrot and b if you execute it you're gonna get the same results so now let's recap if you want to get everything from both of the sets you can use the union but now if you want to return only the shared item the overlapping in the middle then you can use the intersection but now if you want to get exactly the opposite all the items that are not overlapping they are unique in each set then you can use the symmetric difference but now if you want to get only one-sided thing like only the items that are in one set but not in the other then you can use the difference or the opposite if you want to get the items that are in the second but not not in the first and as well you're gonna use the difference so this is fun right this is exactly the power of the sets in python So now so far, if we have like two sets, we can merge things, we can find the differences and the overlapping, but sometimes we want only to understand the relationship between two sets. We are just checking, we don't want to merge anything. And for that, we have as well methods. So for example, if I want to ask this question, is everything in this set, the A, is also inside the other one? And with that, we have a nice methods. It's gonna start with is, as we are asking question. So it's gonna be the is subset. 
subset so is a a subset of b now let's go and print it and see what we're gonna get it's gonna say false because is subset gonna return true if all items from a exist in b so it tells you if one group is fully contained in the other and in this example it is not so now in order to get through let's try this out we're gonna have 30 and 40 so the whole a exists in b let's go and execute it you can see it is true and with that a is a subset of a b now sometimes you want to do the complete opposite so does the group b contains every single item every single value from the other one so it's just the way around and for that we have as well a method that's start with is super sets a so the name says everything right let's go and try this out as you can see we are getting true and that's because b contains all the items of the set a and now you might ask okay when do we use those stuff in real world well i've used this in this scenario you have a table that is a master table that contains all the customer's id no customer should be in the business without having an id in this table and sometimes you have another table that holds as well the customer's information but it is not the master table it is like a subset of customers for some reason maybe the vip users so now now the rule is even if you have like a subset of customers outside they must be part of the master table otherwise there is something wrong in the system you cannot have like customers outside this master table so that's why in order to do quality checks you can use the is subset or is superset to make sure it is clean your master table has everything so this is how i use those two methods in my project now moving on to another question that you might ask do those two sets shares any items for that we have a method called is this joint this is the last one in this group and a so now let's try this out and print now as you can see we are getting false so what is going on it's gonna return true when there is no overlapping between the two sets the two sets are completely separated this joint so zero values in common and of course in this example we have overlapping we have the 30 and 40 now you can make it working and get true if you have like values like 10 and 20 now both of the sets they are not sharing anything at all if you go and execute it you're gonna get true but of course with the others you're gonna get false it's not any more subset now you might ask okay when do we need this i use this in this scenario where i had like one big data set and i wanted to split it into two separate sets to two tables and i wanted to make sure that everything is split it correctly so there is no one same record in both of the sets in order to do that we can use the is this joint to make sure that there is no overlap between them so those are three nice methods in order to check the relationship between two sets i'm not creating anything new i'm just asking question i'm getting yes or no true or false so my friends as you can see sets in python they have their own personality they have their own methods and it is very different from the list and the tables they focus on the content whether the data is clean unique and we use it in order to compare multiple data sets together so those are the unique methods for the sets. All right, no more coffee. So if you like this type of content and you want to support me, then subscribe, like, comment. This can really help to reach nice people like you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.